Welcome back guys. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Jamie. I'm a senior software engineer and today we're going to be going over the repository design pattern. So the repository design pattern, it acts as a middleman or a middle layer in between the rest of your application and the data access logic. So what that means is basically that let's just say you have a front end application and you are creating an Angular app. Okay. So in this Angular app, you need to communicate with an API. In order for you to communicate with this API, you're going to create something known as a service class. So I've already created some example code here for you guys to look at uh, for the sake of saving time. And if you look at this uh, example that I have here, I created one interface. I called it the iStudent interface. And in this iStudent service interface, we have a get student method which inputs an ID of string parameter, whoops, and it returns a promise of type any. So the whole purpose of this interface is to make sure that whichever class implements it, it abides by the contract and it has these methods. So the method that we're looking for is the get student method. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to make an HTTP request to the API, and then it's going to receive a response from the API. Once it receives the response, that's basically the, the job is done for this class. Okay. So that's what our service class is for. Now let's talk about the repository class. So I also prepared some code for that as well. So if you look here, I created a, a interface, it's called the iStudent repo. So in this iStudent repo, we have a method called get student by ID, which takes in a parameter of ID and that's a string and it returns a type of any. So this is very, very important stuff. So the reason why is because now we have two different classes one which is the service class so this is our service layer and this communicates with the api it's it's this is what makes the request to the api receives the response from the api and now we also have a repository class so in this student repository class the whole purpose of this is for us to use the constructor in order to inject a type of uh, service class for the student in this case, we're going to be injecting this class, right? So this is called dependency injection. And once we pass it in, we're able to assign it to the student serve parameter. By us assigning it to this, we can then make use of it here on line 33. So let me go over what this does. So this student repository class implements the student repo interface, which is this one. And that expects that we have a function that's called the get student by ID. Now this function is going to return a type of any, which is basically an object. Okay. So keeping that in mind down here, we created an asynchronous function, same thing, the get student by ID, because we implemented that student repo, right? The interface. So now we wrote const student, which is of type of any, and we, we're going to equal that to await this dot student service dot get student and we're passing in the id so what this does is the student service that we injected into the repository we're using that class if you remember that's the service class that communicates with the api and we're calling the method here that makes that request so by us doing that we're waiting for the response and when we get the response back we're assigning it to the const student. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us back whatever the API returns. So let's just pretend that the API returned an object that looks like this ID one name equals student name here. I don't know, age equals 18. And then I don't know uh, what else email is student at student dot com. So let's pretend that this was the um, well, I'm just going to comment it out the object that was returned to us by the API endpoint. So this object would be assigned to this const. But now we don't care about the ID. 
we don't care about the email. The only thing we want is these two parameters, which is the name and the age. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create an output object, which is what we created here. And we're going to assign these the name and the age. OK, and then output that. So now that I erase this here, once we return that output, we're only going to get back the name and the age whenever we call this method. So this is the repository design pattern. And the reason why is because it's in charge of manipulating the data after we receive the response from the API. And the beauty of this is that let's just say we wanted to swap out the student service. We can replace it with another kind of service. So for example, I want to create instead of a student service. Now I'm going to create a class pupil service. Okay. And this pupil service is going to also implement the I student service interface. So now by me doing this, that means that it requires this here. Okay. But let's say this API is a completely different API. So now we're trying to reach out to an API, but it it's changed, right? This pupil service is going to have an API endpoint that looks like this slash API slash V1 slash uh, pupil instead of slash student and a pupil ID. We can literally do that. Return the uh, the call from the API here, and then all we have to do is swap this pupil service when we inject it up here. And voila, it just works. It's like magic, right? So that's the whole purpose of having these interfaces and being able to just swap things out. And, you know, likewise with this student repository, let's say we didn't want a student repository anymore. We now want to change the logic completely. Okay, so what we can do is we can create another class and we can call it the pupil repository. And that's also going to implement the same interface, right? The student repo interface. So what this allows us to do is it basically allows us to change the logic completely, swap things out under the hood very, very easily. But still, whoever uses this functionality is not going to be affected. So in other pieces of our code where we're actually using this function here, it's not going to be affected if we're swapping out these classes. So that's the power of the repository design pattern. Now, I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, I try to keep it as short as possible. I know it's a lengthy video, but you can always pause, rewind, try to understand what I'm uh, what I'm you know explaining here because it's very, very useful stuff. And it's something that you're definitely going to be seeing on the field a lot. OK. So with that being said, if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell for notifications. Hit the like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.